Hi guys, this is Nick from turnipstarfish.co.uk and today I'm going to show you um, how I digitally colour one of my drawings. I did this drawing earlier in the week for one of my workshops, some of you guys might recognise it. And what I thought I'd do is bring it into Photoshop and put some colour work on it. Um, I've brought the image into Photoshop and it's in a 300 dpi canvas. Um, the first thing I've done now is I've created a new level underneath it and I'm going to create just a really quick background using a gradient. Um, this gives me a base colour to work off. I've already got a rough idea of what colour palette I'm going to use. I'm going to use some harmonious colours, so I'm going to use colours that sit together on the colour circle so it all kind of balances out and feels quite natural. Um, once I've created my flat colour, what I've done is created another level in Photoshop and I've happened to have picked white you don't need to pick white but it, this is kind of a base color I'm kind of using for this character and what I'm doing now is just blocking out my main skin area because she's white skinned because she's kind of like a zebra lady so you'll see in a minute um, what I'm doing on this layer is just blocking out just that base coat layer now with this I'm using a hundred percent opacity on the strength of my um, of my brush so what that means is the color is completely solid you'll see later on I change the opacity levels to make my colors tr slightly transparent this is a bit like painting with uh, watercolors so I'm layering light washes over each other but at the moment I need a base color to totally work on and to put all build up my color layers on top of as you can see, I've picked up my eraser and I've just picked out the edges of this character to sharpen out. So this white zone or this base color zone is quite crisp. What I'm doing now is, although I've used a bit of a soft brush, I've selected the whole base color area. This means now, as I start adding my tone colors, my shade colors, um, I'll only paint on the white area. Even if I move my brush outside of this zone, by selecting just that area, it won't show any colour that is outside of the selected area, if that kind of makes sense. Um, it's just a quick way of um, working, so I'm trying to do this workshop quite quickly. Um, and it allows me to be a little bit messy, but tidy at the same time, if that kind of makes sense. Um, what I've picked is uh, a kind of shadow, a blue shadow colour. Again, I've gone for a bluish colour because I'm looking for shadow tones on, on a white I'm kind of zebra texture, so a grey, uh, it could be it could be a blue, it could be yellow, it could be green, but basically I'm also looking for a harmonious colour that sits with my purple background. So the blue sit next, sits next to the purple in the colour circle, so I know it's going to look quite natural. Um, as I'm working with my brush tool here, my opacity is probably on about 20%, um, and I'm using a mixture of size brushes and just layering up where I think the shadow areas are going to go. Remember when I'm building up shadow, shadow is about form, so form is about shape. So I'm thinking about my light coming in from the left hand side, screen left onto her front, and I'm thinking about how the shadows and the form works according to that light. Now, I've picked up now, on the same level I've picked up um, a kind of bluey grey, which is my stripe colour as you can see. Now again, as I'm building this in, you'll sometimes see I'm working over the same area several times. What this is doing, again, because I'm using an opacity brush, and my opacity is down to probably, I'm, I might be down to about 40% on this now. As I work over the same area again and again, I get a darker darker colour. I get a more uh, full colour, if that makes sense. This, again, allows me, in, in the way I use Photoshop, it just allows me to a, make more fo uh, form, because, again, as some areas I'm deliberately darking in to think about the shape of the figure. You can see there on the leg, how I'm thinking about how the muscle structure works, how the form comes around, around the lower half of the leg and the upper half of the leg, and I'm adding some depth in the colours at the same time. So I'm not always painting just with a solid colour, I'm painting with lots of transparent colours. And this allows me to add a little bit more depth. And also, you'll see in a minute, I'll add different kinds of colours on top. Um, so I'm always thinking about all the colours together that will make the appropriate colour I want, like a watercolour paper, a uh, watercolour painter would do. This, when I painted it, took about half an hour. I've sped up this process, as you can see, 
to make it hopefully more manageable to watch. So it's about 10 minutes, I think. Um, you'll sometimes see on the screen I'm colour picking from the colour actually that I'm that I've got on the artwork already. So that little circle that appear, appears is me doing that. So sometimes I'm just working fluidly, I'm painting with one colour and then I want to take a bit of that colour out because I know I've already got uh, an opacity, a slightly see-through colour anyway. I'm keeping flipping between the colours and just washing those colours over the top of each other. I'm now going to start work on the hair and I've created a new level for this and you'll see why this is quite simple now so I've deselected what I had before and of course because my hair level is behind what I've based in for a skin colour I can really quickly just block in that behind her and it's it's no, no trouble whatsoever um, obviously then I go in and grab a slightly smaller brush and I'm just gonna sharpen in the edges with the eraser and my brush tool just making sure it's fairly crisp okay now some people will obviously line in their drawing itself with a brush in Photoshop, that's that's cool. I mean, I sometimes do that myself. There's loads of different ways of working in Photoshop or any drawing software. There's no right or wrong. You've just, you've just got to find something that works for yourself. And in this process, I've just brought in my line drawing, a pencil drawing. I just scanned it in and I just brought it into Photoshop and I'm just colouring behind it. Once I've put my base colour down for the hair, I'm now picking a shadow colour, so I'm picking a darker grey or blue tone. And again, I'm a little bit, I'm thinking about the light coming in and the form. So I'm thinking about her shadow on her hair to push the hair away from her slightly. Also, that darker tone helps to silhouette, silhouette her light skin, so it pulls her forward in front of the character. I've added some areas of tone on the other areas of the hair away from her, if that kind of makes sense. Also, just to make sure that the hair also has form in different areas. When you're tackling hair, always think about it as an object, as a three-dimensional object. Try not to think about it as a million strands. Um, I, I, tend, I tend to think most artwork is more successful when it's thought about as a three-dimensional object and how light hits it, which you know where the shadow is, where bounce shadow is etc etc you'll probably find it it works stronger in that way here I'm picking some highlight colors um, I'm not although I'm adding white in a way what I'm really doing is adding a, a yellowy lighter tone so I've picked out a yellowy white color the yellow is opposite on a color circle so it should contrast slightly and it's going to just make that bounce a little bit more that same light yellowish tone or greeny yellow tone I'm also using just to highlight some areas of the skin just very carefully this is very transparent this color this color is working probably on about 9% transparency 9% opacity and that again is just to give it a little glow a little wash of that yellowy tone finally in this drawing what I'm just quickly doing is I picked up my eraser tool and I've gone to my line my original line drawing and I'm just tidying up a little bit so I'm just taking out some of those rough lines that I think are interfering with the drawing now I'm not trying to make this a perfect image I'm just trying to enjoy what it is but I do want to take out some of those rough lines that I think are interfering with the drawing now there's some color on it you can see more of this kind of work on our website uh, www.turnipstarfish.co.uk Go and check it out. There's loads of really cool tutorials by Leximon, who works with us. For my final element, what I've done is just grabbed a new layer, and I'm going to put a little shadow on to allow her to sit in the background. By doing that, what I've done is just grabbed a darker tone again. I've used a large brush. I've just brushed in my shadow area and then finally I've just added a blur to that level to soften it off. I hope you enjoyed my quick little Photoshop tutorial. Um, check us out at turnipstarfish.co.uk. We do loads of workshops in drawing and animation and uh, we hope you like our work. Thanks. Bye-bye.